right, everybody. Good morning. Um, all right, so we left off on problem 11, part B. Um, so I kind of wrote up at the top just a, a reminder of what we're looking for. So we're going to be trying to find the the phase, uh, draw the location on a PV diagram as well as a TV diagram. So we've got water. That's important, right? This is this is all for water. The different tables if we had another substance. Um, so our first stop is to look in the saturation, the saturated water tables. So we're going to those saturated water tables, not because we assume that it's saturated or we're, you know, saying that it is, uh, but um, to use the information there to figure out what phase it is. So table A2 is, those are the saturated tables that are organized by temperature. So I'd go to the line item for 150. Uh, let's kind of know it's a little bit, a little bit blurry, but it's right there. 150. You could see that if it was going to be saturated, then your pressure would have to be 4.758. Um, and we are at 10 bar. So uh, I just found another error. okay it's a learning opportunity all right so our pressure not alert well it's a learning opportunity for me and for you to pay attention uh, so my pressure which is 10 bar is greater saturation pressure pressure at 150 degrees Celsius which means that it's compressed and that means that this silly table A4 that I've got going over here, that is not really valid. I copied the wrong table. That's okay. We've got access to our, to our uh, compressed liquid tables, so we'll be okay. Um, the other thing, so, you know, at that point, I just need to go to my compressed tables, but I do want to show you um, how you could show that using the uh, table A3. So, oops. So, or you could say saturation temperature at 10 bar, which is 179.9 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's greater, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yep, greater than our temperature, which is 150 degrees Celsius. So our temperature is less than the saturation temperature, and that would also tell you that, tell you that you're compressed. Okay. So I actually am going to flip to those compressed liquid tables. I'll fix this for, I guess, the next time. There we go. So our compressed liquid water tables, this is table A5. Um, and so, well darn. Oh, actually, that's fine, because I don't need to look up any properties, do I? That's fine. Yeah, I'm second-guessing myself. So I guess I don't really need this at all, right? I answered the first question that it's compressed. And my next question... So I need a PV diagram, and then I'll also need a TV diagram. Right, there we go. All right, so TV diagram, a little vapor dome, PV diagram, got a vapor dome, and we are firmly in that pressed region somewhere. 
So I could draw a little line. Um, which I'm going to kind of scooch him over a little bit. I'm going to draw a little line of constant temperature here. So along this temperature, our temperature is 150 degrees Celsius. And we're right here. So this is 10 bar. Now one thing that I'll, I'll kind of draw your attention to, the corresponding pressure here. Um, oh shoot, darn it, darn it, darn it. Come on, Regina. Sorry, my tails are flipped. I'm so sorry. Go like this, apologies. Those lines of constant temperature, those are flipped, I'm sorry. All right. And now what I'm about to say will make sense. So if this is 10 bar, this pressure right here, which corresponds to where the, uh, where the temperature is 150 degrees Celsius in that two phase region, that would correspond to this number right here. So that number right up there is the saturation pressure at 150 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's 4.758 bar. So it's one way that you can use those TV and those PV diagrams to justify to yourself that those rules that are on that page a couple of pages up um, are valid, I guess. Valid or true. I'm not lying to you. Uh, we could also do the same thing over here. So I'm going to draw a little line of constant pressure. Now my tails will... Okay. Probably should have drawn that line first, but that's okay. So this pressure, and not drawn to scale, but this pressure would correspond to 10 bar. This is 150 degrees Celsius. And if I looked, <clears throat> if I looked in table A3 up here, the uh, saturation temperature at 10 bar, remember him, he was 179.9 degrees Celsius. So that's another way that you can show that, yeah, it absolutely has to be. If it's going to be along that line of constant pressure of 10 bar and, 100, and then at 150 degrees Celsius, it's got to be in that compressed region. All right. All right, next one. All good. Okay. So this is another good. I'm gonna cross out these because we actually don't need those. I was just, I guess, trying to do too much at one time. So I'm just gonna cross that out. It's it's okay the way it is. Uh, and I did change it from 0.5 bar to 0.7 bar. Um, honestly, it doesn't really matter because we're not pulling property data off of the table off of the tables but we are just trying to figure out the phase um, so the first thing that i need to do is go to those saturated tables and figure out what phase it, it, it's in so if i go to table a2 where it's organized by temperature at 100 degrees celsius i see the saturation pressure is 1.014 so i see that my pressure is less the saturation pressure at 100 degrees Celsius. So by those rules, it's got to be superheated. And the same thing for table A3. If I looked up according to the pressure, and if you printed out these before, you'll see that I actually added two line items. So just right underneath it if you need to. So at 0.7 bar, you can see that the saturation temperature is 89.95 degrees Celsius. So you can see that our temperature is greater than the saturation temperature at that 0.7 bar. And there we go. So it's superheated. So if I needed to pull out properties, I would need to go to those superheated tables. But really the only thing I need to do here 
is I'm just going to draw the location on a PV and a TV diagram. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm not going to pull out property data or anything like that at this point. Okay. So I'm going to draw my lines of constant temperature correctly this time. There we go. So we figured that we were in that superheated region. So anywhere along this line right here, what we were, we were at 100 degrees. So that's 100 degrees Celsius. And then this pressure was 0 0.7 bar. And if I wanted to know, say this pressure, I mean, at that point, that's good. But, um, you know, I've marked where the pressure of the temperature are. Um, but I could further justify to myself that yeah, this is where that dot lands because the pressure that corresponds with this dotted line here in the saturation region, um, what would they, that be? That would be the saturation uh, pressure at 100 degrees Celsius, which we can find over here on table A2, and it's 1.014. All right. Okay. I think we got... One more then we're kind of done with this this little song and dance okay same thing i'm going to mark off this table here because we're not really pulling off property data um, but we want to know uh if at 50 bar 20 degrees celsius we want to know what phase it is what phase it's in so the first thing we get do is we go to those saturated tables and we use the information there to figure out is it saturated compressed, superheated, what? So table A2 organized by temperature. And if I go over here to 20 degrees Celsius, I'll see, well, that's my saturation pressure. And I could see that my pressure 50 bar is greater than that saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius. So right, it's definitely compressed. And I could also show um, that from the information in table A3, so saturated tables that are organized by pressure. If I go to 50 bar, I can see that the saturation temperature, 264 degrees Celsius. Well, that's greater than our 20 degrees Celsius. So our temperature is less than the saturation temperature at 50 bar. So by both metrics, it's compressed. All right. And we need to draw it on a TV diagram and a TV diagram, and then we can move on to problem number 12. All right, so here's our dome. Here's a little line of constant temperature. Oh, darn it, I did it again. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, would we still need to use like the given find solve method for these types of problem? Or could we just kind of have it like how you have it where like we just kind of list like off to the side and then just go straight to our diagram? So for this one, let's see. We act, uh, there we go. I actually did have like the given find assume solution up there for all of them, but I just wanted to kind of divide it up so okay. it would be nice and clean. But yeah, like on a test, you definitely want to have that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So there's my line of constant temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius. And our pressure is 50 bar. We figured that it was compressed. So I'm going to put him right here, but we'll verify with that um, the saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius that you know that we are in fact in the pressed region right because that 50 bar is has got to be greater than that saturation pressure um, and it is right clearly not drawn to scale here but at least we're showing that one is bigger than the other so that point zero two three three nine is a number that you're getting out of table A2 up here. And then same thing for the uh, TV diagram. Yeah. 
perfect. So I'm gonna draw a little line of constant pressure here. So this pressure is gonna be our 50 bar. And this little guy right here, this would be 20 degrees Celsius. And this temperature would have to correspond to the saturation temperature at 50 bar, which we see is 264 degrees Celsius. And that's from table A3. Once again, clearly not drawn to scale, but you can at least see you know, the trend just based on how those lines of constant uh, temperature and pressure go. Okay, so let's keep on going. So the next pre the next uh, problem, problem 12, a piston cylinder device contains two feet cubed of saturated water vapor at 50 PSI. And we want to know the temperature of the water as well as the mass. Um, and we're going to draw it on a PV diagram. So I went ahead and put my diagram here, uh, put my givens. I've drawn a little piston cylinder. So uh, the properties that I've got, you want to make sure that you define all those. If it's a process, you want to make sure that you put little subscripts. Uh, you know, this is P1 as opposed to P2, but we're just looking at one particular state here, so there's no need for that. And we want to find um, the temperature, the mass, and then draw it on a PV diagram. Okay, um, so first things first, because we're trying to find properties, first thing that we need to do is find the state because that's gonna tell us what property, what uh, um, tables to look into. Um, so I'm gonna, my first stop is those saturation tables. Not because I'm saying it's saturated, but because I need to go there to use the information there to figure out what phase it actually is in. Um, and in order to use those, I need, um, oh, actually, what is the state? Something that I didn't write on here. It's saturated water vapor. So I'm actually gonna write that here because that's something that I didn't put. So that means like if I drew some, if I drew this on a TV diagram, for example, I'd be on this side. Right, and all the properties that I would need would have a subscript G beside it. Um, so I'll kind of put a little note here. Oh, it's saturated. How do I know? They told me. All right. Um, but I do need to independent intensive properties okay and so in this case I've got my pressure and then I've also got the fact that it's a saturated vapor and as we'll talk and I think we'll get to this today what this really refers to is it's going to refer to an intensive property called quality. All right. All right, so I know it's saturated and I've got the pressure. So I'm going to go to the tables, the, the saturated tables that are organized by pressure. So that's table A3, but I'm going to go to A3E because we're in English units. So just make sure you make a note of that. All right, so we're in A3E and at 50 PSI, you could see the only possible temperature that I could be at would be this 281.03. So answer to A, only possible temperature it could be at would be the saturation temperature at 50 PSI. And that's because we know that it's saturated. 281.03. Um, degrees Fahrenheit. Then it's asking us to find the mass. So at this point, you know, if I look at what I'm given, I'm told that, okay, great, it's a saturated water vapor. So I know it's on that saturated water vapor line. Um, and I've got the pressure, great. 
um, the information that I'm going to use to find the mass would be my volume, right? Because I know that, say, specific volume, for example, this is volume divided by mass. So there's my equation. It's going to be mass is equal to volume divided by specific volume. So I've got the volume, two feet cubed. So two feet cubed over our specific volume. And this guy right here, it's got to be the V sub G value because that's the saturated, that's the specific volume that's associated with the saturated vapor portion of that two-phase mixture. And we're told it's right there on that saturated vapor line. We have 100% saturated vapor. Um, so this is V sub G at 50 PSI. So I'm just pulling it right off the table. So it's 8.52 feet cubed per pound mass. Right, and so it looks like, you know, I'm not really gonna have any unit conversions to do, so that's nice. So whatever that is. Zero point two three four seven two three four seven pound mass. Perfect. That's my answer there. Yes, this is my answer there. All right. And then finally, part C is asking me to draw things on a TV diagram. All right. So there we go. And I'm, you know, I guess I could draw a line of constant pressure, but it, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter that much, I guess, but I'm going to draw it anyway, just for, for completeness. There's my line of constant pressure. So anywhere along that line, we're at 50 PSI. And I know that the location of my, uh, of the water is going to be right there on that saturated vapor line. This is going to be 281.03 degrees Celsius. And then my specific volume is 8.52 feet cubed per pound mass. So on a regular basis, if I ask you on a test to draw a process, for example, on a TV diagram or draw the location of a state, um, I will be looking for, you know, what's the temperature at that state? The, the Like, what are the coordinates, right? Right, you need, well, I guess X and Y would be, right? B, T, you need those coordinates of that dot. So I would be looking for those on a test. Just be prepared for that. Problem thirteen. It's it says um it says that we're supposed to it's the PV diagram instead of the TV diagram. Just like doing uh, extra. So I'm seeing there's a couple of questions. So yes, I will get the thank you for the uh, T, uh, PV diagram. Um, so no, I so there's a question about significant figures. I probably should be a little bit more um, focused on it. Um say on the safe side go ahead and do those significant figures um, as long as you're not rounding off like uh, I don't know 50 psi to 100 psi or, or something like that it, as long as it's not egregious I'm not really going to uh, be too stressed out about it so I guess Here's my PV diagram, and then somebody else corrected me. That should have been degrees Fahrenheit, de not degrees Celsius. Not going to be the last time that that happens. Okay, so anywhere along that line, we're at 281.03. There's my dot still on that saturated vapor line where I am at 50 PSI. 
and then this guy would be 8.52 feet cubed per pound mass. Perfect. All right, thank you. All right, problem 13, determine the change in volume, and we want that in feet cubed. So I went ahead and on my find, and it's behind my head, I think, there we go. Behind my find, I've went ahead and indicated the, the units that I want that delta V in. Um, and we want to draw that process. So this is different. It's a process uh, for uh, from one state to another. So you'll see in my given, I've made sure I put some subscripts here. So it's from a saturated. So we got our mass, two pound mass. Uh, and then state one is a saturated liquid water. State two is saturated vapor. And then it's a constant pressure of one PSI. So it's the same thing at state one as it is at state two. Okay. And I don't know that I really need to make any assumptions, but if I do, I'll throw those on there as I come across them. All right. So change in volume. So the first thing that I need to do is get a governing equation for that. And I'm probably going to need to put these in term, put that governing equation in terms of properties that I can pull off the table. So I need it really in terms of intensive properties because that's what I can pull off those tables. So our delta V, it's what it is after minus what it is before. And I'm going to put that in terms of specific volume. Actually, it's mass. I'm sorry, not one over mass. I'm going to put it in terms of specific volume because that's what I can get off those tables. All right. So our V2, well, it's a saturated vapor. So V2 is going to be our V sub G at P2. At state one, we've got a saturated liquid. So it's going to be the V sub F at P1, or at P1, P1, P2 being the same thing. So I'm going to go to my saturated tables because I've, I've really already figured out what phase it is. So saturated tables is where I need to be. They need to be English units. So you'll notice that it's A3E. Um, and I'm looking at the ones that I'm not looking at A2. I'm looking at A3 because it's organized by pressure. So at one PSI, there's my V sub F. There's my V sub G. Both of those are in feet cubed per pound mass. The V sub F hadn't been multiplied by a thousand or anything like that. So um, ahead and put this down. So two pound mass times, let's see, it'll be my V sub G. So I got three, three, six point, I'm sorry, three, three, three point six minus zero point zero one six one four. The units there are feet cubed per pound pound mass. All right. So that is uh, something. Something in feet cubed. All right. All right. Plug and chug though. And now we need to put things on a TV and a PV diagram. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so the way it looks, our T, this is this part B. So here's my vapor dome. Here's my line of constant pressure. So this is at still on the last problem. So this is P1, it's also P2, and that's 50 PSI. Ah, gosh, I'm still on it. One PSI. One PSI. Ah, thank you guys. So 667, let's call it 667.17. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so I know state one is on that saturated liquid line. 
and state two is on that saturated vapor line. So I'm gonna put one, one with a circle and a number two with a circle. What I do wanna caution you against, don't put S1 and S2 for like state one and state two because there's a property, uh, you'll see already, there's a property over here that's defined as S, so you don't wanna get that mixed up. So I don't want you to get in the habit of that now. Um, so in order to have this complete and get full credit, I would need to make sure I had like the coordinates drawn correctly. So I'd need to define the specific volume and the temperature at state one, state two. Um, so temperature is the same because the only possible temperature that it could be at would be the saturation temperature. So this is 101.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just getting that right out of table A3 or A3E. And then I've already pulled these values out. And honestly, because I have it defined elsewhere, that would probably be plenty enough for me, but let's go ahead and put it on there. Oops. Did it again, 333.6. And then I'll put the units on here. This is in feet cubed per pound mass. Yeah. Perfect. Same thing for the TV diagram, and really it kind of looks the same. <laughs> oh, and I took out all kinds of room for my that diagram. That's okay. Let's make that smaller. Yeah. Perfect. So for part C, it's a PV diagram. I got a little line of constant temperature there. And this is my temperature, my saturation temperature, 101.7 degrees Fahrenheit. At one PSI. And then my state one. State one is going to be right there on that saturated liquid line. Sat, uh, state two going to be right there on that saturated vapor line. And actually the last thing that I need and I didn't put it on this one, so make sure you do draw a line in between. It goes straight across along that line of constant pressure. Okay. And this is our V1. This is our V2. And honestly, I've defined it elsewhere, so that's, that's sufficient for me. As long as it's obvious, you know, as long as you make it clear that you know what those data points are, that's good with me. Okay. So, problem 14. All right, so we want to know the change in specific volume. So change in specific volume of, the wa of water as it undergoes a constant pressure process from a saturated vapor at 100 bar to 360 degrees Celsius. Um, and we're gonna draw it on a TV diagram. So what I've drawn, or what I've put in my given, I've put, okay, it's it's water okay, it's water um, and I know the pressure I know the temperature at state two and then they also told me that it's a saturated vapor okay so here we go and I've defined everything with some subscripts so first things first yes I need to define um, you know, my governing equation here for Delta specific volume but that is kind of what it is. It's, it's what it is after minus what it is before. So at state one, it's saturated because they told me it was. And, and furthermore, it's a saturated vapor. So I need to go to the saturated tables to get that data. So I'm gonna take go to table A3 and it 100 bar will pull off that specific volume. So V1, saturated vapor, that would be the V sub G at P1, which in this case is this number right here. So 0 0.01803 meters cubed per pound mass. Perfect. 
But for state two, they don't tell me what phase it is, so I need to use the property data there to figure it out. Um, so I'm told that it's at 100 bar and uh, 360 degrees Celsius. So I need to go to the saturated tables first. So. Go to the saturated tables first. You can go to table A2, or you can go to table A3. It doesn't really matter. Both of, are, are, both of them are convenient. I just happen to be in table A3 already. So I'm gonna use the data there. So um, we're at 100 bar and 360 degrees Celsius. And so you can see at 100 bar, if it were gonna be saturated, your temperature would have to be at 311.1 degrees Celsius. And that's not what we're at. So our temperature, 350 degrees, is greater than the saturation temperature at our pressure of one bar. So it's superheated. So we need to go to the superheated tables. And these are organized in blocks of pressure, which is really convenient. So I just need to go to the one um, that has a hundred bar, and then I need to look up my look at my temperature. So there should be a line corresponding to temperature. You can see that our specific volume, we can pull that value off right there. So the way you may see me write it, V2. It's the specific volume as a function of two independent intensive properties. So it's a function of the temperature being 360 degrees Celsius and our pressure being 100 bar. And based on those two independent intensive properties, it's 0 0.02331 meters cubed per kilogram. Perfect. And so I think I'm good there. Now it's just a matter of, you know, it's plug and chuck, right? So this is going to be 0, 0.0. Oops. Ah, come on. Well, 0 0.02331 minus the V1.01803. And I've got 0 0.00528 meters cubed per meters cubed per kilogram. Okay. That's our that's our first answer. And then we do need to draw it on a TV diagram. So I left a little bit of room down here. So go ahead and get that. So T, V. And here's where you definitely want to uh, draw that line of constant pressure because your process takes place along a line of constant pressure. And state one, it's a saturated vapor. So it's right there on that saturated vapor line. State two, it's superheated. So you know it's gotta be in the superheated region, but it's also along that line of constant pressure. So here's one, here's two, here's the line that connects them. This pressure right here is 100 bar. There's this temperature, there's this temperature. So T1, well, that's your saturation temperature, isn't it? Because there's only one possible temperature it could be at. See, there we go. It's 311.1 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put that down here. Celsius. And then our T2 was 360 degrees Celsius. Here's my V1. There's my V2. I've kind of defined that elsewhere, so since I'm kind of running out of room, I'll say that's good enough. But I have, you know, like up here, I've defined it, so that's that would be worth full credit to me. Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead and let's introduce the concept of quality because we've sort of been referencing it a little bit, um, but this is defined as, um, it's we use X for quality and it's defined as the mass of the saturated vapor over the mass of the saturated liquid plus the mass of the saturated vapor or just mass of the saturated vapor over the total mass. So this is only defined for substances in the saturated region. Right, and it goes, we kind of zoom in on this TV diagram that we've got over here, and I'm gonna do that right now. Perfect. Um, so on the left hand side where you see a number one where that dot is you'd have a saturated liquid and so you'd have a hundred percent saturated liquid clearly no saturated vapor and so your quality would have to be zero but over on the right hand side where you have a hundred percent saturated vapor quality is one so it goes anywhere from zero to one if you find yourself at any point in the semester with a quality over one, then you know you fixed your state wrong. You know that, oh, I'm probably not saturated. I'm probably actually superheated. Let me go back and check something. The reason why this is really useful is because if you have something that's not right on that saturated liquid or saturated vapor line, and you need to know, let's say the specific volume, right? It's gonna be clearly, it's gonna be in between that V sub G and V sub F uh, I'm sorry, V sub F and V sub G at whatever, you know, temperature this is, for example. So it's going to be calculated as sort of a weighted average using that quality. So if it's saturated, it's going to be V sub F plus your quality times V sub G minus V sub F, and sometimes you'll see this written as V sub F plus your quality times V sub F G. And the reason is sometimes, um, not for all of the saturated tables, but sometimes you'll actually see a column where they've done that math for you, and there is a column for V sub F G, so just be aware of that. So that's an equation that's on your equation sheet. Make sure you check it out, see where it is, so you're comfortable pulling that information off of the table. Okay, all right, and let's go ahead and introduce the concept of interpolation. So at this point, we've for the most part uh, had, well, yeah, for, for anything that we've pulled data off of the table from, we've had the data point that we need on that table. But, um, you know, if you're at, if you're looking uh, in the table and, you know, you're in between two values that are listed, you need some way to get to, to pull data off of the table. So we're gonna use linear interpolation. So what that, and I would encourage you watch the video, but essentially it treats, like in table A2, it treats these as sort of X, Y coordinates. Okay, and it's saying, okay, well, if you're zooming in to that data, like the, the, the data is not linearly uh, related. It's not related as a straight line, but if you just zoom on a really, really small portion of it, um, you can approximate the relationship between two really close data points as a, as a linear function. Um, and so that's what we're going to do here. So let's say that if I look in table A2, I've got a column for temperature and I've got a column for the corresponding saturation pressure. So We've got on the on the table, you've got 15 degrees and 16 degrees, but if you needed to know, say, the saturation pressure at 15.2 degrees, then you'd need to interpolate. It's clearly gonna be between that 0 0.01705 and 0 0.01818 number, um, but it's not, it's not an average of it, right? Unless you're right in the middle. Um, so the way that you're gonna do it is you're gonna say, okay, well, if those data points are linear, linearly related, then the slope between them is also linearly related. And your slope is change in Y over change in X. So I'm gonna call this column X and this column Y. If I switched it around, it would not matter. It doesn't matter. All right, so your slope, 
uh, which is what we always use M, I guess, slope between those data points. So it's change in Y over change in X. Make sure that you're going, you're being consistent in the way that you're, um, in the order that you're going in. So I always work from bottom to top. So my change in Y, well, 0 0.01818 minus 0 0.1705. Change in X would be 16 minus 15. Now I'm going to look at, let's say, these two data points. So, all right, working from the bottom to the top, it would be 0 0.01818 minus that PSAT at 15.2 degrees Celsius over, working from bottom to top, uh, 16 minus 15.2. And so if I just solve for that PSAT at 15.2 degrees Celsius, I should get something in the middle there. Let's see what I've got. 0 0.0172. Uh, to eight. Yes. Four. So if you get something that is not in between those two data points, you've probably like switched up the order or something like that. So just, yeah. All right. Um, if you're not in between two data points, you can extrapolate using kind of the same idea. So, you know, maybe if I look in table A5, these are compressed liquid water tables. So let's say you're at, you're at 20 degrees Celsius and um, 20 bar and you need to know um, what the corresponding specific volume is. So at 20 degrees, oops, I'm sorry. At 20 degrees Celsius and 25 bar, I've got a data point for specific volume. And at 20 degrees Celsius and 50 bar, I've got a data point for specific volume, but I don't have it for 20. So I could extrapolate and that would be fine. Same, uh, basically same formula, formula. Um, so I'm approximating the relationship between those individual data points as linear. Um, and so uh, I would get this guy, I'd get 1.00082. Uh, right? Yeah. Times 10 to the negative third meters cubed per kilogram. So, uh, you know, if you're you know, if you're not extrapolating too far outside of that range, it's probably okay. Um, another word about those compressed liquid tables, there's sometimes you actually don't have compressed liquid tables. It's, it's not terribly common to have them for every single substance. In fact, with water, um, we have compressed liquid water tables for that, but other substances that we have, uh, that we analyze in this class, we don't have those compressed tables. Um, and so there are approximations that you can use for the properties if it's a compressed liquid. So if it's a compressed liquid, you can approximate that your specific volume is actually the V sub F at T. And that's a value that you can get from table A2. So you're not saying it's saturated, but you're saying that Okay, it's compressed, but my specific volume is pretty close to this number. So, for example, if I wanted to use the same thing that I extrapolated for up here, I'm, I figure out that it's compressed, water is compressed at 20 degrees Celsius and 20 bar, great. Um, I could extrapolate or I could use a compressed liquid approximation, which is often a little bit easier. So you would go to table A2, and you would look up the V sub F value at 20 degrees Celsius. So I know we're running out of time, so I'll go ahead and kind of zoom in on that and just show you where that is. Yeah. So table A2, okay, it would be this one right here. That's our V sub F. So it would be 1.0018. One, 
1.0018 times 10 to the negative third meters cubed per kilogram, which you, you can see is pretty darn close uh, to what we got up here by extrapolation. And this one is a lot easier. So this is actually the one I'll use for compressed liquids typically, right? If it's something that's right in those compressed liquid tables and I don't have to interpolate or extrapolate, then I'll probably just use a compressed liquid approximation. All right, so we'll have two days next week to get through the rest of these. Um, if you haven't watched that interpolation video, make sure that you do kind of run through that process a little bit so you're comfortable with it, um, because that will be something that you would be expected to do on the test, okay? Okie dokie. All right, well, you guys have a wonderful day. I will be in office hours. If you have questions, just pop on over, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.